Hi, uh, let's see. Uh, she said my name, almost correct. So uh, <laughs> uh, let's start with that. Um, I am Rerik. I have been working for uh, a little bit more than 20 years. And I have started to find minor, minor things that uh, make my life easier. Because I am, I am a lazy guy. I don't want to do anything unnecessary. So I try to keep it as simple as possible to make me do less work, right? So uh, I am uh, head of mobile at Seven Peaks. Uh, it is a small company with uh, the ambition to do big, great things. Uh, we need to be agile, both code-wise and project-wise. We need to be able to have uh, the possibility to test and change and adjust. So everything we do has to be as simple as possible. So, keep, keeping it simple might seem as a little bit of an ambitious title. Uh, it's more of trying to get it as simple as possible. But that is too hard to say, and I'm lazy, so just keeping it simple. Uh, so, what is simple? Uh, I did some searching, and I found four definitions of simple that I like. Uh, the first one is that it's easy to understand. Uh, it has no difficulty at all. And that's something. Uh, the second one is it is something that is simple, it's composed by one single element. There is no complex structure and nothing like that. It is just simple, one thing. So, um, and for this talk, I'm going to talk about the architecture side of it. So, First, what is architecture? Uh, for me, uh, it is proof that someone has been thinking. It might be good, it might be get bad, it might be overthinking, overcomplicated, but it's a proof that someone has been thinking. And that's a good sign. Uh, it is also a, an effective way for communicating between projects, for example, or when I meet uh, other developers and we talk about architectures, I have my patterns and I can say we use this um, MVP or we use this. And most of the guys I talk to knows what I mean. So it's a way to describe a solution and it's uh, an effective way to do it. It is also a way to get the pro uh, project to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, I've seen projects when they have a lot of screens and they probably touch every single uh, display pattern that, it, that is, like uh, the MVC, they have MVP, that had MVVM, and so on, uh, in one single project, making it really hard. So, good architecture, we say we select something and we stick with that one makes the project more consistent. So, uh, what makes an architecture simple? For me, this is something that probably every single one of you have read so many times. Everything that is testable, debuggable, maintainable, and extendable is make the architecture simple. So, to make it testable, debuggable, maintainable and extendable, it has to be readable and easy to understand. So, let's see. Uh, when starting a new project, uh, we kind of set the direction from, from day one. We decide on how we want this project to evolve. So, uh, many years ago, uh, People started to talk about the three-layer architecture, which was great. Uh, it is one of the most 
pure patterns there is. Uh, I'm not sure that you can see it, but the, the upper arrows, they are dotted, they are not solid. Uh, so the bottom is one more solid. And that basically tells us that the UI layer knows about the business logic layer, and the business logic layer knows about the data access layer. But they don't know anything the way up. So this is a one directional architecture. And when designing an app, this is for me the best at the highest at the highest level of how I want to organize my code. So I've seen projects which uses this as different modules. They do the UI as the app, the de default model. They create a logic module and they create a data access layer. And that one is good in the sense that it forces you not to have any dependencies in the wrong direction. So that's good. But I think this is a good way of grouping things. But most developers do one thing. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say wrong, but it can be done a little bit better. Uh, for example, if yeah, we can see that uh, here is actually the, uh, the packages. We have divided them into the three layers. But many developers take this grouping with them when they go into, for example, the UI layer. Uh, and I think that as soon as we go into one of these boxes, we have to switch. We have to group by feature instead of layers. So that um, we get a little bit better understanding. Uh, this is an example on how, if you take the uh, layer by, no, sorry, the package by layer with you into the app, we will get the package called view. All the view will be there. We will have a view model package. All the view models will be in that one. We will have the adapter package with all the adapters and so on. Uh, I believe that it's a better approach to switch, to group by feature instead of layers for several reasons. Uh, that basically means we still have the model as it's own package, because it is part of the data access layer. So we have this at the highest level, we still keep the grouping by layer. But as so soon we go into the UI, I think we should switch and focus on the feature. So in this example, I have a screen package that contains the screens of my application. Uh, I have a list and I have an item. So, why should we do this? Uh, I colored some of the... Yeah, they look, looks, looks okay. I was a little bit afraid of the green one. But, uh, I have grouped these files into two different ways and to show, visually show the difference. In the first example, where we have the layer, uh, if one of my developers is going to go in and to fix something in the list view. He most likely has to fix something in the view package, in the view model package, and in the model. And if I tell them to, no, we're going to write a new list, delete the list, and we start from scratch. They have to go into every single package and delete the file. Uh, I've been involved in projects that has over 50 screens. And I've also been uh, heard of prod, uh, apps that have more than 200, maybe 300 screens. This will make these packages explode, right? And first find one file among 300 files. And then when you find that one, you have to go to the next package and find the, the, another file among those 300. It doesn't make sense. It takes way too long time. So by switching it and grouping by the feature step, 
we have everything we need in one single package, making it way easier to work with. And it also becomes way more modular. So if I tell someone to copy this one into the next project or to delete one of these, it's basically one click to delete everything. I actually heard people referring to this grouping as the one click delete structure. One other thing is uh, if we stick with the layer, everything will be tangled. Uh, it will be dependent between the packages that will be make the code harder to work with. It's, it becomes really hard to to extend and to adjust. As a feature, it is basically the same argument as in the previous screen. It is grouped within one package. There is no way that you can, basically you can't mess up the structure. I can put our new guy into this same, you can do whatever you like in this package. Just make sure that that package, that this package has uh, not that much tangling into the other packages. Some dependencies are necessary, but keep them as small as possible. It is also really scalable. I told you about the project I've been in that had 50 screens. Uh, adding a screen to this one, to that structure was it's not hard, but it's still annoying that I have to go to several different places to make one screen. If I uh, go by the feature, I create a new package and I collect my files there. An example could be saying that we want to add authentication to, to our app. In the layer version, I have to go into the different packages and add the file to the different uh, for the different parts. If I go with a few features, I have them grouped into one package. Uh, one bonus with this one is actually the code that eventually go into this package. I really don't care if that is good code or bad code, because I know that I can make a ticket saying we need to rewrite the authentication package and I know that everything in there is collected in one place. So I can do something quick and dirty to get it up and running, and I know that it's contained within that package. Uh, authentication is uh, a good example in the sense that you usually don't have only one screen, you have several parts. You have you know, sign up, log in, uh, I forgot my password screen, and stuff like that. So, it is totally okay to actually put those packages within the authentication, because they are removed. I actually would say that I prefer it, because if I would have them on the same level, I would have packages called authentication sign-in, and I would have another called authentication sign-up. I get really long packages named that start with the same thing, and it's actually getting harder to read. So, by doing this, I know authentication. Okay, I'm in that context. I can look at the other packages. I can see it has sign in, sign up, recover. So, this is actually the coolest thing about this one, abstraction. How many of you here, if you forget the slides you saw previous, how many of you can say what this app is about? No one, right? I wrote this and I still can't say it. This one. It's still just looking at the packages. Now we can see, ah, it has this, this item, or oh, well, it probably has to log in because we have authentication. Even expanding that one, we can see, oh, this authentication has the sign-ups, the sign-in recovery, and we're still not looking at one single class file. So this is just the structure. 
which makes it easier to navigate, easier to find, and easier to work with. So, as soon as we go into one of these boxes, like the UI, we change to feature instead of layers. The layers are good, but they should be on the highest level. So, uh, I, when I had been working for approximately five years, I think, I started to notice a couple of patterns that made my life easier, uh, especially since I'm a little bit lazy. Uh, and I was really excited about this one, so I actually broke some of them down and I went to work. I, um, I told my co-worker about my findings and he looked at me strangely and said, are you stupid? Don't you read? And he told me that I should look up the solid principles. And first I was a little bit, you know, sad, because I thought I found something unique, but apparently some other guy thought about them as well. Then I got a little bit happy because that means that I'm not the only one thinking about this, so I'm on the right track, right? So let's look at these ones. The first one. And this is the single most important one of these principles. Make sure that the class you write only do one thing. That is the most important thing. Uh, that basically means that in Android, we usually use the activity uh, and the fragments. It, it should handle the communication from the user into the app. So it shouldn't download anything. It shouldn't do uh, database queries. It shouldn't do anything else except showing the views so the user can communicate by clicking. It also adapter. Uh, I do a lot of code reviews and I've seen these quite a lot. A lot of people write their adapter that goes directly towards uh, network or database and upload things. Makes it really hard to test and it makes it really hard to continue working with. So the app adapters only responsibility should be to convert the data into the visual views. So we need something else to actually load the data and set it on the adapter. This one, uh, this is the open close principle is something that I learned the hard way. Uh, I've done this error so many times. So, uh, to try to explain this one is, say that I have, <coughs> say that I'm going to write a rendering engine, and I have, I want to render rectangles and circles, and I created my my classes for that. Then I write my render. So, let's just look at this a little bit. Is this extendable? Sure, I can add another class, but I also have to modify, modify my render, right? So that means it's, it is open for extension, but it's not closed for modification. If I, on the other hand, make my shapes a little bit more, a little bit smarter, like, letting them take care of their own rendering. Then my render would look a little bit less messy. And if I want to extend this one, I can extend it by adding a new class, right? And I don't have to modify anything. This is the open closed principle. So extending this one, I can make my triangle and I don't have to touch the render. This one, list of substitution principle. Uh, when I talk to people about this one, everyone says, oh, that is obvious. If you have something and you extend it, of course it should, shouldn't change the behavior of, of the program. Uh, but I've seen stuff like this. I have a sound that extends shapes. 
basically that means that when my rendering engine renders this class, a sound is played. And that is kind of altering the correctness of the program. If I instead have just a square, let's say in the rectangle, that doesn't change the correctness of the pro program. So, and this is what it means. Extend, ex exchanging any class with anything that is still a shape will not alter, should not alter the correctness. Interface segregation principle. Uh, this is probably my the error I do most. Uh, first time I wrote a game, I created an entity. It was a tower defense game. My entity, I had to have you know the trees and uh, the stones and the small houses and stuff, so I had to be able to draw. But I also had to be able to move stuff because I had enemies, and I. And these, some of these enemies, like the towers, should be able to attack. This made a quite nice class. But the thing is, this principle says that I need an entity that only handles the draw. I separate it from the other things. This means that when I render my game, I can render all the classes that implement this draw. I don't have to care about the other ones, right? So, I continue, I do my enemies. They should be drawable, because I want to see them, and they can move. So I added movable. My towers, drawable of course, attack, they can attack the enemies. But they can't move, so there is no need to iterate through them when I trigger the, the movement and then, of course, I implemented my hero character. It has everything. Of course, he's a hero. So he can move, he can be drawn and attack. The last principle. Dependency inversion principle. Uh, it basically is that, for example, if I have a presenter in the MVP pattern, uh, if it has knowledge about the implementation. In this case, it knows that the data comes from a database. It breaks this principle. What this principle say that we, is we should depend on the abstraction instead of the, the concrete thing. An abstraction for this case could be like we have a repository. The presenter fetch data from the repository that really doesn't care if it's from the database or from the internet or in memory or whatever. It really doesn't even care about if we have a cache layer inside the repository. And that's the last one of the solid principles. But the first one is the single most important one. So, back to three layer architecture. Uh, it is nice and clean. Oh, you can see the dotted arrows here. <laughs> uh, it is one direction, uh, it's clean, it's, yeah, it's almost perfection, right? So let's look into one of them. I go into the UI now. Whoa. Suddenly it gets a little bit messy, right? This is the first, the MVC, uh, one of the oldest one of this type of patterns. Uh, we have two problems here. It is called model view controller, but the controller doesn't control that much, right? Because anyone can change the model and the view will be updated. So that's one issue. Another issue is that now we move to touch phones, we have the screen we touch on. We don't use the buttons anymore, which means that it's more logical that the, that the input points to the view instead of the controller. So let's fix this. And then we get the model view presented because we can't have the same name for the same things, for different things, right? So, uh, and this is probably the most used pattern I've seen in Android, uh, but it still has 
one issue, and that is the connection between the view and the presenter. Otherwise, it's, it's quite clean. It's a nice line. And the, and the problem here is that the presenter and the view knows about each other. So, let's break it up. And here comes the view model. Model view view model. Uh, it is probably the most popular at the moment. Uh, it is easy, it is clean. Uh, it has one direction uh, dependencies. Uh, and it's all these data binding libraries and the fact that Android comes with data binding makes these patterns quite good. But there is one problem with this one, and it's, it's the view model. For example, if we look at the input, the input does only one thing, right? It takes the touch, send it to the view. The view do, th do one thing, it communicates between the user and the app. The model is quite stupid, it just data, right? What does the view model do? The view model presents, format and presents the data that should be shown in the view, but it also reacts on the user inputs to fetch and load the data. So that one does more than one thing. And since I said that the single responsibility principle is the most important one, I have to fix this one, right? So, there is something called a view model presenter view model. It's getting hard to remember these names, right? Uh, but if you, if you look at this one, this one is really, really clean. I, uh, we have one direction uh, between the vertical slides, like the input to the view, view to the view model presenter slide, and into the model. Uh, I know that a lot of people say that, yeah, but this looks a little bit more messy. Yeah, it does. But if we try to ignore looking at the input, the view, and just focus on the view model. It is a single directional dependency between those. So that part is also clean, just like this one is clean in the context of being in some uh, UI part. So, uh, I've been asked uh, quite a few times about how should uh, a complete overview of the architecture look like? It's a really hard question. What I can do is I can give you an example of one way that works pretty well. And it is based on three-layer architecture because we have, we have the UI part and it has the business logic, in this case in, for, um, in the form of use cases, and we have the data access layer as form of the repositories. So, uh, just a quick question. How many have ever tried this pattern? No one? Oh, two. Okay, that's good. Keep doing it. <laughs> uh, my guess is that way more people have tried the MVVM, right? Most projects that I am being thrown in doesn't have any kind of uh, structures like this. Uh, I've been working as a consultant for a little bit more than 10 years, and my, in the beginning my role was to go into a project and clean it up. And that basically meant refactoring. And it's qu quite fun, but it also can be really, really not so fun. Uh, so, what I learned by doing a lot of refactoring is that if I start by organizing the file structure, I completely just move files. Uh, most EDA we have today take care of uh, all the dependencies. They uh, fix basically everything. They even 
suggest to make certain uh, methods public instead of protected or packet protected and so on. So moving files now is really easy. The second thing that is most important, the second thing that is most, the second thing that is second most important, uh, is the single responsibility principle. If you, after you have rearranged the files, if you can go into each file and make sure that they do one thing, extract them inside the package, keep it there, but try to extract them, you will get in a way better shape than the project was from the beginning. And next one, bottom up. Uh, I don't know if you have heard, but there is a, a lot of talk about bottom up design now, which basically means that we start with a model and then we build a layer by layer up uh, until we get to the UI. I think that as soon as my file structure is in place, I have my single, my classes with only one responsibility then I am in a really good place to actually start to changing the product. Start by locating all the models. Making them clean, put them down there somewhere. Make a nice structure to fetch them. A repository pattern or a storage or any other pattern. So, and make sure that the rest of the app only goes through that layer. And then we go one step up, there is very few apps that only works directly with the uh, domain model. They usually do a lot more like taking two, demo two different models and do some calculations and then do something. So collect the, the, those kind of logic and you will get the use case scenario. And when that one is done, we can start looking at changing the UI into a model view presenter, model view view model, or even a model view presenter view model. Uh, and then the product will be in a really good shape. So, my suggestion is like this. Fix the structure, make sure they have single responsibility principle, and rearrange the structure, make the architecture from bottom up. And probably it will probably not be perfect, but we will be good enough to do to handle maintenance, to handle uh, uh, extend uh, development, further development. It is good, easy to test, and it will be uh, most likely a quite solid and solid that. So I uh, I do have if someone have questions I do have a couple of minutes over. Uh, I, I I heard that uh, people might be shy. <laughs> so but yeah. How do you define your single responsibility? Uh, I try to think... Uh, if, I, if you can say what this class does with one sentence, it's good. For example, uh, I had an argument with a friend that tried to say that this one doesn't work. He said that the repository <coughs> do four things. It creates, it updates, it basically do all these for the crude methods, right? But I can do that in one sentence. I can say this repository manage this model. Then there is the same guy said, yeah, but I can say that my activity manage everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to argue with that one. <laughs> but it's it's a definition of how you see it, but try to make it as, if you can say it in one sentence, that makes sense. For example, my app activity does everything, doesn't tell you what it does, right? 
But if I say that this repository manage this domain model, you know what it does. I don't see any. Yeah. Uh, so when talking about architecture, uh, do you use specific frameworks to help you have a, a architecture in your app, or you do it by yourself? Uh, I I'm old, so I do it by myself. When I was young, we had no frameworks. <laughs> but the thing is, there, there is a lot of help in doing things like this. But I think that. Um, the help is it's good, but I usually try to uh, keep it as simple as possible. Try to keep I don't use any frameworks to define my my architecture. I do use framework for the implementation of some of the, my patterns. For example, I uh, I can use data binding to make the communication upwards, but that is a detail. It could just as easy be that my model wasn't observable, and I just got events. It could be basically everything. So that is details. But for the thing that taught me how to make my code clean is when I started to use uh, a tool called Structure 11, which is basically it analyzes the code and draw, draws a lot of boxes with a lot of red arrows saying you've done this wrong, basically. Uh, I am one of the lazy ones, so I, I have to admit that I don't write that much unit test. I do write unit test as soon as I know that this is critical. If I, with, for example, uh, Android Studio IntelliJ, they are so, so good that my refactoring, it moves everything, it even suggests a lot of things. But I try to keep my unit tests as few. It's more about uh, quality than quantity. So I choose, for example, if, in my case, I would say I would create a unit test for my use cases. There's no idea for me to test, write unit tests for my models, right? Because that basically just get in centers. I can write a unit test for my repository that do some logic. Any more questions? some kind of shared component, I move them one package out. So, at the same, let's see if I can run out the package. Oh, sorry, what was the question? Uh, if I have shared components between the screens, what I do. Basically, <laughs> if you look at this one, uh, if my list and item has uh, some shared component, I would, if it's a view, I would create a package on the same level as the screen, saying, for example, widget, so they share it. If they have shared models, they are probably already in the models part. But there are, I've been a lot, done a lot of projects where they have adapters that are uh, reused in the the app, and then I put them on the same level as the screen, but in an adapter. The only thing I have to remember is when I the, the app continues living and I delete the screen, I have to make sure that if that screen uses something in the share folders, I would like, and I noticed later that now that adapter is only used in one place, let's move that one into that one, so it doesn't messed up the code. <laughs> so, I am out of time. I have 
10 seconds to get to the last screen. So, go. Well. You, you shouldn't stress things, right? So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I am working on, on an example of this architecture, and I was hoping to have, be done with it to this, but I, I hadn't had time. So, but I will post on Twitter as soon as I have something. Thank you.